For these functions, we need to find the y coordinate maximum, the maximum value of the y coordinates, and the minimum value of the y coordinates, and record them in the sheet. And then hopefully we'll see a pattern, and we can predict for this one y equals 3 sine x without using GeoGebra what's going to happen. Um, so here we have the y equals a sine x curve. It's currently on 2, so we'll try that on first. We don't need the algebra view, so we can click the cross to close it, or the other option is we can go to view and just take off algebra view. We will need the spreadsheet view, so we're going to put that on. Um, but we don't need all those columns. Three should do, so just shrink it ever so slightly. We now need to select this curve, and we want to put a point on that curve. So point on object, which will follow the curve around. And I'm going to put it here to begin with. And then arrow tool, so I can select the point. Right click over the A. And I want to record the X and Y coordinates of point A as I move it to the spreadsheet. These are going to be the X coordinates in that column. Don't need to change any of these options. They're fine, so we can just close it. And this is going to record the Y coordinates of A as we move it. So let's start moving it all the way around. I'm slowing down as I get to the maximum minimums to get a good reading. Slowing down. Okay, we've gone to column 166. Go back up to the top using the scroll bar. I want to find the maximum value of those y coordinates. Just looking at this curve, what do you think the maximum y coordinate is? Is there a graph up here? No. So what's the maximum y value of this graph? What's the minimum y value of this graph? Let's see if that's right. So I type max. You need square brackets, otherwise it won't understand round brackets. I scroll all the way down, it'll only take me to B20. I want to go to B166. So it's going to read all the data in cell B2. Column B, row 2 is here, a bit like chess, all the way down to B166. What's the maximum value? It's 2. I'm going to do the same for the minimum value, square brackets. And I could just type it in this time, B2 to B166, and the minimum value is minus 1.99. That probably means I didn't go slowly enough as I went around the minimum. It should be minus 2. Um, I can enter that data here. So the maximum value is 2. The minimum value is minus 2. And that's how I record the y and x minimum value va values. What about the x-intercepts? If we go back to the sheet again, there's a function that you can type in here. Um, I'm going to again, I want the algebra view this time. And in the input bar, I'm going to type in root. I want it to find the root of our function. So square brackets, can you find the root of function? And it's function f, I want it to find the root of enter. Let's see a slight error in that command. I've got to give it the initial and end values of x, so square bracket. It's a very common mistake. F, and it's, I want it to start on, say, minus 240 and go to minus 120. Because I just want to check if the x-intercept here, where it intercepts the x-axis, is minus 180 or not, or if it's minus 179.8 or something like that, which I just can't quite see. So this is a way of making sure. Press enter, and there is the coordinate of the x-intercept. Point B, point B is minus 180. So I know the x-intercept can happen at minus 180. There are three other x-intercepts as well that you're going to have to find. One, two, three. You could also find that one over there, but it's outside. So I could do root again, just to show you that once more. Square bracket, it's function f that we're looking at, function f. And I want to maybe find this zero, just check. So I want to look between minus 60 and 60. Is it zero as it looks to be from the graph? And sure enough, point C, there's point C is zero, zero. So I, I know that's another x coordinate. It's zero, it intercepts x axis, and so on. That's how you find the maximum minimums and x intercepts using GeoGebra.